and laser printers and photocopiers are getting cheaper and cheaper every day, allowing millions access to their own high-quality printing presses. Now, that's great for free speech. It means that people across the world can print and distribute their own political pamphlets, leaflets, books, or in my particular case, dozens of pictures of funny cats that I've downloaded off of the internet. Hey Danny, we need to use the printer. Yeah, okay, all right, just a moment. But what if I was to tell you that there's a secret code on all of these documents? A code that allows governments and other people in the know to trace any page back to its original printer. I'm Danny O'Brien from the Electronic Frontier Foundation and this is Seth Schoen, EFF staff technologist. Hello. We research new technology and find out how it affects free speech, privacy or other civil liberties. And in this Instructable, we'll teach you how to see and decode the printer dots. The yellow dots of mystery. So Seth, you were the leader of the group that researched and decoded the, uh, the printer dots, but I, I do have to say that I can't see anything on this page apart from the cute cat. Well, Danny, the code isn't in what you sent from your computer to the printer. The code's been added by the printer. The printer itself has sprayed a code all across the entire page. And that code's invisible, yeah? Well, it's difficult to see under ordinary conditions. It's printed in yellow and very, very small. Right, so in yellow because, um, because yellow doesn't show up against a light background. That's right. Under ordinary lighting conditions at this size, it's almost impossible to see. But we can actually make it visible by magnification or by changing the lighting. So this is a sheet of paper from our printer taken with uh, a microscope. That's right. This part of the paper here is blank. We use the DinoLite Pro computer microscope here, but you can use any of these USB microscopes that magnify uh, 200 times. Yellow dots here and here and here. What if I don't have a microscope? Well, in that case, you could use uh, blue light, for example. That would increase the contrast, because if you look at the yellow dots under blue light, then the yellow dots appear black. Oh, that's great, and I actually, actually have a blue light here. It's the Electronic Frontier Foundation's very own blue LED flashlight, available free, yes free, for only a donation of five dollars. Anyway, it's easier if you turn off the lights and shine the blue light on a blank part of the piece of paper. Here's what a printed document looks like under a blue light. You can see that here the yellow dots appear dark. So once you found out about this, Seth, what, what actually did you, you guys do? Well, we took a look at the sample pages that we printed, and we invited the public to send us samples as well, which they continue to do, and they're still welcome to do. So we've built up a collection of sample printer pages, and we've taken a look at them under blue lights and under microscopes and tried to characterize the patterns and tried to figure out what information is stored there and how it's represented. And have you learned anything from this? We've learned quite a bit. With the help of a couple of volunteers, we've managed to break some of the codes, but not all, that are used to represent this information. And um, what's actually encoded on the dots? So the most typical information that you get in the dot patterns is the serial number of the printer that made the print and the date and time that the document was printed, if the printer knows it. Uh, and have you found out this kind of information for all these, these yellow dots? Have you cracked them all? No, so we only know for a few kinds of printers how to read the information. We're confident that all the printers that do this convey the same kind of information, but the way that they convey the information is different. It depends on the particular model of the printer. A lot of manufacturers have different codes from other manufacturers. In fact, we can often tell just by looking at a dot pattern what kind of printer made that print even if we don't know how to read the code. So I can look at a page like this one and tell you that it was made on a Hewlett Packard color laser jet. So if somebody has done this, they found the printer dots for the first time and they want to help out with the EFF's printer dot project, what would you recommend they did? Well, we're still collecting samples. So we'd encourage people to send in their printouts in the mail. Uh, we have an address on our website. You can send us printouts in the mail and help add to our collection hopefully help us or other researchers by giving us more sample data to work with. Another really important thing that you can do is let printer companies know 
that someone actually cares about this. This is something that the printer companies have done on their own initiative at the request apparently of the government, but not in compliance with the law. They didn't have a legal obligation to do this. They were just asked to and went along. So you can let your printer company know if you object to this. Well, thanks very much, Seth. Thank you, Dan. What if I don't have a microscope?